Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about how to multiply Maclaurin series. Um, it's a bit of a difficult process, but if you organize yourself, it becomes less difficult. So I'm going to show you how to do that um, in this one example that we're going to do. We're going to use the Maclaurin series for e to the x and cosine x, and we're going to find the first five non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for e to the x times cosine x. All right, so there is the Maclaurin series for e to the x. Uh, we know that from previous lessons, and here is the Maclaurin series for cosine x. Now notice that it does go on beyond those terms, um, but um, if I'm finding the first five non-zero terms, I've already done this process, so I know exactly where to stop, but if I didn't, I would probably add a few more terms uh, just to be safe. So what I need to do to find the um, Maclaurin series for e to the x times cosine x is basically multiply those together. Um, you'll notice that there are five terms in the first set of parentheses and four terms in the second set of parentheses. So in order to use distributive property on all of this, I would have to do 20 multiplications. Now you can write them out in a big long row and that's fine. Um, but what I would do is I would use a box. And so I've set up a box right here and so I've got e to the x, the terms of e to the x are going to go along the top row, and then the terms for cosine x are going to go in the left column. And hopefully I've got, I mean, I know I've got an, enough terms, but if I didn't, I would add columns or rows um, if I needed more terms for either of those Maclaurin series to get the right answer. All right, so I'm just putting my terms of e to the x in that top row, just to remind myself. And so the first term in the Maclaurin series for cosine x is one, so I'm going to take one and multiply it by all of those yellow terms, which is not hard. I'm basically just copying those. Um, and notice how I've expanded the denominators. I haven't left them as factorials because that could get a little difficult um, to understand and to simplify. So the next term in the Maclaurin series for cosine x is negative x squared over two factorial. So now I'm taking those yellow terms at the top and multiplying them by negative x squared over two. So I get terms like negative x squared over two, negative x to the third over two, and so on moving down the line. And then the last term uh, that I need to concern myself with in the Maclaurin series for cosine x is x to the fourth over four factorial. So again, I'm taking that and I'm multiplying every yellow term by that, and here's what I get. So I know that um, I've done enough uh, terms to get five non-zero terms, which is what I'm asked for. So now I just need to find them. And because I'm organized like this, they're kind of arranged in a nice little pattern so I can figure out what they all are. So the first thing I'm going to look for is my constant term. That has the lowest exponent of x, uh, x to the zero. And so there's my constant term right there. It's the only one I have, so I know my first term is going to be one. Now I'm going to look for x's with no exponent, just x to the one. And it looks like I only have one of those, so my next term is going to be x. Um, so after that, I look for x squareds. And I have two of them, but they are the same with opposite signs. So I actually have no x squared term in my Maclaurin series. So I'm gonna skip that and move to my x to the thirds. And I have two of those. If I add those two together, I'm going to get negative x to the third over three. So I'm up to three non-zero terms. So I'm going to keep going until I get to five. So I look for x to the fourths. I've got three of those, and those add up to negative x to the fourth over six. Um, and now I have my x to the fifths. Those add up to x to the fifth, negative x to the fifth over 30. And so now I have five non-zero terms, and so that is my uh, Maclaurin series for the function e to the x cosine x with five non-zero terms. If I needed more, I would have added more columns, more rows, and done more multiplications. But I really didn't need more, so that is my Maclaurin series. So that's the process. Um, I would organize it with a box because it is distributive property with a lot of terms in both sets of parentheses. So you've got a lot of multiplications. It's easy to miss a term or two and get a bad answer out of it. So I highly recommend the box method for doing this. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know, and I will see you tomorrow.